If you've never removed a cassette before, it can seem pretty daunting at first, but with the right tools, it's one of the easiest maintenance jobs to do. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to remove and reinstall a cassette for either SRAM XD, Shimano Hyperglide, or Shimano Microspline, and I'll even explain to you what brand of cassette you'll need for your particular Freehub body as well. So tools for the job, you'll need a cassette tool, which is something like this. Uh, you'll need to remove the lock ring that attaches your cassette to the wheels. But if you wanna save a bit of money, you already have a big adjustable spanner, then you can actually buy parts that can just be held together with that spanner. Now, when you open that lock ring, your cassette is gonna move, so you need a chain whip device like this to hold it in place. Uh, you can get some that look like this as well. I prefer the chain ones. And also you'll need a bit of grease as well, because that will go on your free hub body to stop some binding. So this little piece of metal here is basically a lock ring that holds this entire cassette onto your free hub buddy on the wheel. And this cassette tool just needs to fit into there, into all the teeth. And then it's an anti-clockwise lefty loosey motion to open it up. But as you can see, as you turn it, it will turn the cassette as well. And that's where this chain whip comes in. Now I prefer to put mine on the left-hand side as I look down on it and wrap the chain all the way around the cassette and then kind of get the tool to hold itself in place. Now you can either have it down here and hold it or push it down or you can hold it at the top like I do here and then get your tool back in into a nice place where you can push down on that and hold the whip in place and that will start to unravel. So once that's nice and loose, I tend to take this chain whip off and I like to put the wheel on my knees gently or on a table or a floor and then just start to do it by hand. You wanna undo this nice and gently and then maybe even start to undo the lock ring by hand just to make sure you don't damage any threads. So once this lock ring is off, you can then take the cassette off. And if you should damage anything on it, damage the threads, then you can buy them as a replacement, but do keep hold of it. Then it's just a matter of taking the cassette off. Now these can fall into a number of pieces. So if you're wanting to keep this as a spare or put it back on, I tend to put my finger in the middle and try and keep it all in one part. You can also zip tie this together if you wanna keep it as a spare in your garage. So there's three main free hub bodies and you'll only be able to fit cassettes that match that free hub body. So you might have to take the cassette off to see what you've got or check the specs on the wheels or the bike when you bought it. But basically you've got Microspline, which is this Shimano with tiny teeth. If you have a Shimano wider teeth variety like this, that's Hyperglide. And then if it looks like there's no teeth at all, then that's SRAM XD. So Shimano invented Microspline, not only so that it bites better, but also so that it could fit the tiny 10 tooth cog on the 12 speed cassettes there. So all Shimano 12 speed cassettes will fit onto Microspline, including Dior, XT and XTR and SLX. Some of the older ones, usually nine to 11 speed will fit onto Hyperglide, but the newer 11 speed also fits onto Microspline. So don't assume, do check the specs. With SRAM, even though you've got a SRAM cassette, you might not necessarily have a SRAM XD body. Actually, some of the lower models in SRAM cassettes fits onto Shimano Hyperglide. So when you're buying your new cassette, obviously it needs to fit onto the Freehub body, but also needs to fit your derailleur. So if you're changing the gear ratio, if you're changing the bigger cog on your cassette and running more teeth for an easier gear, you do need to bear it in mind that not all derailleurs will take that bigger gear. So do check the manufacturer's specs on your derailleur to see what gear it can take. And when you do fit a different size, 
bear in mind that you're going to need to adjust the bead tension on your derailleur to make sure it meshes properly. Now before you put your new cassette on there, you just want to check for any damage on your free hub body, make sure it's still running smooth, and if there's any paint wear on that, it may be that you didn't grease it up enough last time. And speaking of grease, it's a good idea to put a little bit of that grease on the free hub body just to stop binding between the new cassette. Now when you get your cassette out of the packet, some of them might fall apart. Shimano usually have pieces rather than one solid piece. So just be careful when you're taking it out of the packaging. And if it falls apart, don't worry. Just remember that everything goes from big to small, including cogs and the little spaces that go in between. If they're different sizes, it goes from big to small as it goes up the cassette as well. Now, it doesn't matter what free hub body you have, whether it's SRAM XD or Shimano Microspline, all of them will have a tooth that only fits into one particular hole in your cassette. So you know that you line up either that big gap or that big tooth in with the corresponding tooth on your free hub, and it should just fall into place. If you're using Shimano Microspline, you'll notice that the last cog sits on top of the 11th cog. Bonus tip here, you'll see a tiny little dot on that cog, which lines up with a little dot on the 11th cog as well. So you can just line up those dots and it should fit into place. Once you're all on the free hub body, you just need to put your lock ring back in and I would use a little bit of grease on the threads just so it goes in smoothly and doesn't bind in any way. So your lock ring will go on clockwise or righty-tighty if you like, but I like to just circle it anti-clockwise just until I feel that tiny little click, there it is, which means that the threads are perfectly lined up and I can start to tighten it back up clockwise without cross-threading any threads at all because I know they're all lined up. If for any reason this lock ring doesn't seem to be biting or going in even though you've done that sort of backwards method to find the thread, it's probably that you haven't lined up those top three chain rings on your Shimano microspline. Do double check those dots and make sure they line up on all three of those top cogs. So now you've got your lock ring on there, just sort of finger tight, nipped up. You're gonna use your cassette tool and just line those teeth up again. And remember this time it's righty tighty or clockwise if you're looking at the cassette. So I'm looking down at it. So I'm just gonna push this down on the left hand side until you get a decent amount of resistance. If you've got a torque, tool that will fit your cassette removal piece, then it should say on your lock ring what the newton meter setting is that you need. So on mine, it says 40 newton meters. So you should be all good to go now. And all you need to do is put your wheel back in your bike and check that your gears work. Now, if your gears aren't working great anymore after you've put a new cassette on there, it might be that your old chain has meshed with the old cassette and you might need to put a new chain on there. But do check out our other videos, which should give you an understanding of how to fix your gears and to troubleshoot any problems. But for now, if you found that helpful, do give us a big old thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more maintenance tips like this in the future.